Good evening everybody, welcome to the studio this evening. Nice cup of tea. Just Jessup, good evening. You might have been late, but uh, you were early. <laughs> so welcome. Right, another envelope to open here. Which contains tonight's, um, tonight's activity, or some of tonight's activity. Ooh, if I can get into it. There. Interesting. Interesting. Somewhere around here, I am hoping there is some instructions on this not seeing any so this could be oh <laughs> I'm not seeing any instructions guess what I'm not seeing any I'm not seeing any instructions <laughs> fluffy twiglet good evening and welcome to the studio this evening oh dear talk about me being a little bit dim I am busy looking for instructions and I can't find any instructions. Yeah, it's a package. So another another kit with some loose beads in it. Okay. Beads. More beads. Now oh, these are faceted. Those are round and these are faceted. Those. That's. These blue ones that are purple are round. And these blue ones that are blue, that are light blue. And another looks sort of a, an aqua green almost there. He's a faceted. In here are four tiny beads. What may be a bugle bead? Yeah, looks like a bugle bead. And another one of sort of like that clasp from last night. Okay, and some more fishing line. Are they purple? Yeah, you're right. They are purple. Unfortunately, they always look purple. Always looks blue. Opening and closing a jump ring. Okay, that would be fine, except there isn't a jump ring. Um, so, yeah. The reef knot. Okay, so that's how to tie knots. And two pages of instructions. I love the way the camera though sort of goes, you know, that's that's not purple, that's blue, and that's not blue that's not pale blue, it's green blue. One of these days I might eventually have a camera that actually will successfully uh, represent the right colours. Yes, they've got an only date strings and okay. So what's it saying? Um, okay, this one is doing it backwards and turning it the opposite way to the way I did it the other night. Not a problem. 
So I now have to do that bit, and you've got approximately. Then start feeding the feeds in. Okay, right. So basically, um, do what I did the other night, but this time add some beating. So it says what, 60 to 80 centimeters of, 60 to 70 centimeters. Okay, so I'm going to need 70 centimetres is about two feet, so we'll, uh, we'll probably need, or well, we certainly need, a disc. And probably you're going to need these bobbins again in order to do this. Twiglet goes to um, illustration school and, and finds out it's not all about illustration. I wonder why there's four beads at the bottom and a bugle bead. Maybe they just, oh, I don't know, just got in there somehow. Uh, I need a ruler. So I'm going to measure off about 70 centimetres. I need to know what 70 centimetres are. It should be 35 times 2. Seems obvious I guess. I'm going to change my glasses though because I think it's also obvious that I won't be able to see this thread because it's invisible thread. So uh, quite what <laughs> Quite how having a different pair of glasses is going to help me see something that's invisible, I'm not sure, but it seems like a good idea. And the other thing that they'll tell you you need scissors. Well, I was classy enough, school, university, they teach you things. Well, I can see this invisible thread. About that much. And the easiest way of doing this then is having got that much off if I can manage to do it go all the both of them hold them tight and then just well the idea was to pull that like that and then I'd be able to measure the two side by side I, mean, I seem to have managed to have got a knot in there to start with. It doesn't help. Two.
That's three lands. is for Why don't I do this a slightly easier way? Let me pull one of these threads out, doesn't matter which one. Six, I want two more. Seven more. Well, that lot just sounds like so much hard work. <laughs> um, for free twiddler. Eight. And there's even some left over. So that can go over there. Now then, what does it say put on each thing? Um, Thread 24 beads. Okay, how many beads have I got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. It doesn't actually matter how many I've got, does it really? What matters is me putting them on to. this thread so I'm going to cut the end off of this bead string which means they will go everywhere hmm food engineering isn't necessarily as interesting as it sounds <laughs> just just so Is 
is yeah, this is almost just a well in fact I'm almost certain it is. These beads have been strung and then painted afterwards. I suppose one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, nine, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Ah, so hmm. I'll put me in a little plastic bag. <laughs> yeah, has very little to do with actual food as such. <laughs> Did it? Okay. I kind of half thought I'd, I felt something go on the floor, but um, I shall have a look. You can see how it's kind of uh, looks like it was obviously they were painted after they've been strung, because there's paint between the uh, the beads on here. Wow, you've got good eyesight, just yes, Jeff. There is indeed a bead on the floor. So, uh, 24 on a yeah on a thread. So I tie a knot in the end, surprisingly, so they don't come off. <laughs> See the cap was reversed. Maybe there's another one on the floor then. Yeah well. If I'm one shot, I'll go looking. Yeah, so that's the right side of the camera as far as I'm concerned. I know it's your left. Maybe I ought to flip the camera. In fact, that's probably a good idea, actually. At times, <laughs> you shouldn't set yourself up for things like that, just Jessup. Uh, that's the cam properties of that and let's flip it that way actually you can flip it that way as well might as well which isn't flipping it's unflipping it so it looks normal then and I can do things like that without having to work out which way my hands going Now luckily I can, uh, I'm going to say I can see the end of this uh, this thread, what I can't see is the hole in this bead, there it is. Mm, I can see it's taking quite a while to just thread beads. Assuming I can get it to go in said hole in bead. Try the other end, there we go. Two. Yeah. Right. 
Indeed, Fluffy Twiggler, it's beading. Oh. Five. I actually envisaged this was going to be actually harder than it actually is. Six. The hardest part about this is finding finding the hole in the bead. Seven. Eight. I'm off frame, aren't I? Nine. Ten. Eleven. Nah, she said braid, uh, just Jessa, but if there's any brides around that want some jewellery, some of this stuff could be quite nice. I forgot how many I got there. Five. That's five, that's nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. <laughs> of course just Jessup it's my stream <laughs> that's the whole point isn't it <laughs> it's all about self promotion 5, 9 uh, 10, 11 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 if I don't do it who is 14, 18 Nineteen. Twenty. Yeah, there you go. How's that for timing, just Jessup? <laughs> Say twenty-four. I keep forgetting. Yeah, twenty-four. Just round those. Push those down to the bottom and check the count. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-four. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Bit of clever programming there, you see. Another knot. successful but oh, maybe one two three four oh. 
pretty far. Okay. Well, it's more like trying to eat bees with uh, with a knife, uh, just Jessup. So I've forgotten now how many. I... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's amazingly hard to talk and keep uh, and keep count at the same time. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Mind you, I've actually got no experience of trying to eat peas with a with a, a knife, so. It might actually turn out to be very easy. I'm told if you put honey on your knife, it makes it really easy. 17. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, and twenty-four. Well, actually, yes, but that, but it, but it's of interest to me, probably not to you guys, because you wouldn't have a foggiest idea what it was about. And in any case, that's business, and I'm not at work now, so hmm, tough. Um, don't, what, don't talk about work. Um, more than the usual sort of slight complaint about it. It's uh, it's internal stuff. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. We'll get on with the interesting stuff soon, hopefully. This is kind of interesting. I mean, it's mm, threading beads. But uh, it's part of the part of the fun of doing things is uh, is the preparation sometimes. You get to watch me chase beads around a plastic tray. Uh, predictions fairly low probability tonight, I think. Um, Fairly low. He's um, last couple of nights he's taken to laying on the bed when it's bedtime, when it's his bedtime, about 
half past nine, ten o'clock, so I suspect we're not going to see him tonight. Let's work. <laughs> Works that stuff that I occasionally do on a Monday morning. Um, no. I work quite hard. Well, I do work quite hard. But there again, everybody says they work quite hard. I don't actually know what's easier. Do I do it with it like this? Or uh, picking them up. One. So I pick them up, I've got to try and find the holes. Two. Whereas on the tray they're sort of almost naturally because they're slightly flat where the holes are, they sort of tend to sit that way. Three. They sort of tend to sit hole up so you can see where the hole is. Five, six, seven. I like the work I do, but um, you know they pay me to work when I'm at work, not when I'm out of work. So nine. So I forget about it when I leave work. Ten, eleven. Twelve. And as you're familiar with my um, sieve of a memory. Forget about it, it's about the right adjective, I think. 13. 14. 15. Everything's easy when you know how, uh, just Jessa, I've lost count. Um, but of course, this is almost a mini game in its own right. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. Seventeen, eighteen, twenty. Twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, feed them all down there and then count them just to check two, four. Six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four. I don't think it, I mean I'm putting these on here, and you know, I suspect it won't be that hard if it turns out that um, I'm like one shot or something like that. Just undo not the knot on the end and. Um, uh, add an extra bead or so, but 
I almost forgot to tie the <laughs> knot on the end of this one. I wonder how many people watching are waiting for me to do just that, forget to tie the knot. And I'll put it down. Now then, there's more than 24 left, I think. And of course, all the ones that are left are going to be the ones that are awkward to get uh, to get on. One. Two. Three. Five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen, all right, time to pick him up. Fifteen. Raise his hand for what, um, just Jessa? I mean, you're a, you're a big boy now. If you want to go to the toilet, you know where it is. I think that's 16. <laughs> I lost count. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Ah, oh. twenty. You're wanting me to fail. Oh dear, just Jesse. You watch my channel and you're wanting me to fail. You're probably not <laughs> not alone. <laughs> I fail all the time. You just get to see it. 22.
24. When these beads were painted, you can tell that they were they were hung up to dry because the paint's gone down the outside and formed little tiny sort of tubes, if you like, on the out on the bottom edge. So I can tell that when I've been trying to put the um, the thread through, it goes through from one side but not the other because you because of that little tiny sort of extension. Um, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four. That's the last of the blue to be done. Hmm. Guess what? I'm not going to do it for the others. So let me just. I have to have a little baggy here, so I shall put them away. No, not particularly. Yeah, actually, no, it, it wasn't, but it could easily be. That that's that's when things get frustrating. Things like you know trying to put um, a thread into the hole of a bead. I like trying to thread a needle. That of of all the things that I do, and you you know you've seen me where. Um, doing all the pyrography and stuff like that even the chain mail and people say you could have a lot of patience to do that no thread put threads through the eye of a a, a bead these beads uh yeah patience much of it i mean if you, you recall when i did the the needle and the 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 small beads this thing Two millimeter, well, 1.7 millimeter diameter beads. So the hole in the middle is going to be less than a millimeter. They're about 1.7 millimeters long. Not a problem with that. These things, which are bigger, yeah. Sometimes size is not an advantage. It just takes a matter of relaxing into it, um, just Jessica. I mean, it's it's part of the fact that I'd love. To, oh, well, no, I, I don't know whether I'd love to do it as a job or not. To be honest, but um, if it was a job and you know you to get so many done an hour, maybe then it might be a little bit sort of stressful. But um. Well, wow, they've actually strung this one and put a, an end on it. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. In some ways, it's a state of mind. If you look at it as though, ooh, you know, it's going to be hard, I've got to do it, I don't want to do it, then it becomes stressful. If you look at it from the point of view of, hmm, yeah, it's to be done, doesn't it? be done now if I don't really want to I can go and do something else um, then uh, it's not quite as stressful because you know you can stop I could have gone so wrong <laughs> let me throw that away after I've taken the last bead off of it oh there's I've done that with that as well. I put a loop through both end beads. What that does is hold it in place. I was about to pull that bead all the way down here to get it off instead of doing that. Right, let's see if this one is easier to thread. Because these haven't been painted, so these are natural beads. Mm. 
only thing is they're not likely to lie neatly in that little tray because they um, they're faceted beads. I don't know about trying to uh, to thread put thread through the um, the beads. I'm not trying to put thread through this loop of thread is hard enough. There we go. So again, twenty four of these. One. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. These are easier to do. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Fourteen. Hello, creams. Fifteen. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. Twenty-three, twenty-four. So, how are you doing today, uh, creams? <laughs> so, yeah, you see, it doesn't work when I, unless you can say it out loud, because I'm not watching the the chat while I'm counting. Two, four, six, eight, ten. 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. That over there. And do that again. Six, you need a steady hand though. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. 
12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and I'm so going to tip that over if I don't move that ruler. At that point I could say exactly the opposite, Creams, but then I quite plainly am alive, so... Uh, I'm not doing too bad, thank you. Two, four, six, eight... 10, 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, 0. That's right. Two more. Yeah, that's right. Two more. And then I can actually start weaving. <laughs> True. Can I do something like... Probably, but... Yes, I definitely haven't thought of that actual logical conclusion. Um. Two. Three. Four. Five. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, and we'll count them and make sure two, four, five, six, eight. 10, 12, 14, 16, 
18, 20, 22, 24. I don't suppose it actually matters that there's exactly 24, it's more a case of there's a quarter of them on each of the threads, or at least, a, you know, that sort of number, at least uh, 24, I guess. Monofilament, always wants to go its own way. I remember when I was fishing, it was, uh, the thick line like this was always a bit of a pain in the neck. Especially to tie it actually. I used to use forceps back then rather than uh, uh, pliers, but you always needed to really make sure you pulled a t knot tight because otherwise it would just work its way open. why I keep shaking it like that. Um, the, the beads aren't exactly round so a shake like that gets them they're, they're slightly sort of over flattened and they're flattened on where the hole goes through so a slight shake like that tends to make them sit hole up which makes it easier to to just put the uh, thread through. Four. Five. Easier that is, not easy. Six. Seven. Nine. All right, time to pick them up and find the hole by hand. Ten. Eleven. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Eighteen. Nearly there. Nineteen. Twenty. You won. Twenty two. Twenty three. Twenty-four. Looks like they were a bit more stingy with these beads. There's only three left. Let's count these. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, twelve, ten, eight, six, four, zero. 
Right. I would not have estimated, I would not have thought that to cut eight threads and feed 24 beads on each of those eight threads would have taken an hour. But it just has. So, now let's see if I can do this without dropping everything all over the place. One. And without tying knots in the wrong place. Two. Three. Four. Now putting all of these threads together. Five. Six. Counting to make sure I don't leave any out, you see. Seven. Eight. And then I tie a knot in this end with eight of these things. without missing any out. bit is a little bit and as I say this is monofilament so it wants to untie itself and yeah it sort of um, just slipped back through as that did there I get that knot tight. Um, glue. I do not trust this to stay fastened. So that's a little bit of cyanacrylate adhesive. Now then, I have some, what they call it, kicker. What this is, is um, an accelerator. So excuse me, just tipping this off to one side. I don't want it all over the camera. It smells nice. But that, just a spray of that, and I'm assuming it is okay with this. We shall find out because I'm about to put my fingers on it. There we go. It's set. Normally, cyanacrylate adhesive like that doesn't set in the presence of air. You actually—that's why you've 
when you put you know you hold things together basically for a couple of seconds to exclude the air the the kicker does it for me so i don't have to exclude the air it just um sits there now then Right, so finally that told me what I was after. So that will go through there. Now just for the moment I am just going to stick any thread anywhere. And then we'll come back and sort it out in a minute as to which one actually goes where. That's two. Now then, what I'm going to do here, and this is going to be off, probably off camera, is I have to sort these out. So, excuse me a second while I just go off camera, because I've got to put the same colours opposite each other. So those two, so I want the two blue ones. I want that one there, which means one of you doesn't matter which one can go there and one of these is one sec that one okay and that can go there okay what's got to happen with these is that pair and that pair have to be the same colour as each other and that pair and that pair have to be the same colour as each other which I've just messed up somehow because that one isn't. So which one have I got wrong? Uh, that's blue. So those two are light blue. Which means those two want to be light blue. So what's that one? That's light blue. You can go over there. And that one is light blue, so that wants to go over there. Those two are dark blue. One there, one there. And those two are dark blue. Over there. Yep. Now let's just undo the knitting a little bit. By which I mean there's just they're just wrapped around each other so I'm just going to unwrap the uh, threads from each other so they just sit a bit neater, neater. so that thread there is a dark blue and that thread there is also a dark blue and that one and that one want to untangle from each other So that should still be the dark blue, which it is, and that's the light blue there. Okay, I'm just neatening things out a little bit around here. Push that through there. Now I'm going to put these bobbins on, so that um, I, they don't get tangled up basically, which is what they're already doing. Uh, yeah, just a moment, uh, creams. I shall have to uh, just obtain it from where it is, but it uh, won't take me more than a couple of seconds. Uh, 
Be right back, as they say. So the the one I was doing yesterday was and the day before was just a, a plain uh, plain um, braid. So that was it was one long length which we cut a uh, seven inch length off of and put end caps on for a bracelet. If I can manage to do this like that. So that was a a colourful bracelet. Yes, you can do. Um, of uh, every, and this is this is the necklace, which was a longer length, uh, and it just has a, a, a hook type clasp on the end. With everything that's in the um, in the shop, just Jessup, um, all the um, all the colours can be changed. There's there's 16 colours for most of the stuff that's in the shop. The one that's labelled Special Lady, the crystals, there aren't 16 colours of crystals. There's only about eight, but um, just a quick... So these, these are the ring colours, so any any of the bracelets can be made in any basically any, any of the colours. And you can get creative in terms of half a bracelet can be one and half another. As to whether it looks good is another matter. But I'll uh, just open the lid and I'll show you the colours. Bit difficult to see some of these. Silver, white, it's called sea foam, which is a, a mint green, yellow, um, a light blue, sky blue. That's a deep purple. I think one of the. Um, if you look at the Simply collection, uh, there's. Uh, there is a picture in there of, of all these colours, and the purple actually looks purple. And you can see the purple. That's a purple. That's an orange. That's kind of a lilac. This one's a bit of a variable colour depending on the size of the rings. Um, some are paler than that. This is a champagne. Gold. Pink. Royal blue. Green. Red. Bronze. This is called... Um, Black ice, it's sort of a gunmetal, silver, silver grey, sort of almost not, you know, not black, but not it's difficult to explain really. Uh, and that's black itself. So there you go. And whilst there is one more colour, it's only available for one bracelet, and that's not in the shop at all at the moment. <laughs> bracelet is cool. It, oh, thank you. I wasn't quite sure. I mean, this is it's it's totally a random colour, really, as it as it came out because the thread changes colour as you, you go along the thread, and so um, it's sort of a a random. You know, no two would be identical type of thing. Um, so. It's, uh, it's quite nice, thank you. Right, let me um, tie this up. I'll just put this onto the uh, bobbin, get you keep stuff out of the way.
I might put the um, those uh, those braided bracelets into the uh, shop. I'm not sure. They're, um, it took a lot longer to make than I was expecting, which of course time is what uh, what costs with jewellery making more than uh, the materials. So. I'm not sure it'd be worth me putting them in, but we shall see. I might well do so. I do want to make, uh, ideally I do want to make some of my own design though. Um, and some of the more complex weaves you can do nice things with, like make little heart shapes in it or um, strawberries or things like that. No, I don't want any beads up there at the moment. Thank you. Go back down there. Right. Any moment now, we'll actually be able to begin doing some braiding. It's been an hour and a half since we started. Right, and this, okay, I can take those pliers off of there now. Uh, untangle these things before I even start there we go and the final bobbing yes there is a mallet around but Moobot does a reasonable job most of the time anyway Right, time to braid. Now, why would you want to borrow, to borrow a mallet to creams? Why would I want to promote what sounds like um, violent behaviour? Right. Basically, I can do this how I like. So I'm going to do it how I did the one last night. Let go. I've heard dafter answers in that uh, Cree. <laughs> now I definitely wouldn't want to promote self-harm so I need to weave about a couple of centimeters it suggests of this uh, which is what goes into the clasps basically so it doesn't want beads on the end of it here I need to have enough uh, just on its own to go into the clasps. I'm going to try and keep a decent tension on this, which is a 
mentioned before, given mon it's monofilament, that's not the easiest of things to do. It's springy. It also wants to unwind itself from the bobbins. Because it's slippery. Take a deep breath. Don't worry. I uh, I quite often want to do things like that myself when I've got a migraine. Anything to get rid of the migraine. I am doing this off uh, window again, aren't I? So. these things have unwound themselves a little. Let's just make you go back in there. Don't want you unwinding completely just yet, thank you. On that one, so come over here and do this one. That's about a centimetre long. I need a bit more. No, that's not true. Cream's not true at all. I mean, obviously, you're good for something. You're watching. Um, you're watching me. Uh, I have got now a tail on there. I don't actually know how long that tail is. Almost two centimetres. We'll do a bit more before we uh, start to introduce beads. Right, that's too saddle do. So, 
Now I need to get a few beads out of each of these uh, these things here. So having just sort of fastened everything up, now I do it the other way. I am <laughs> I'm fastening my tip beads out. Doing this with um, what am I trying to say? Doing this with bread seemed an awfully lot easier. Good evening. What did you miss? You missed quite a lot. You've missed. What have you missed? You missed the scraper board. You've missed um, two bracelets, a necklace at the very least. Yeah, Shabby Q, it's not necessarily as easy as it sounds. when you were last here Orbix so I don't know whether you missed what came before the scraper board either Of course, as soon as I let go, that one go gets so loose that it starts popping out of the cat carving. Oh, the cat carving. Um, where is the cat carving? There we go. Uh, there we go. There's a the cat carving. A sleeping pussy cat, complete with tail wrapped neatly round, which I don't think was too bad for my very, very, very first carving, as you were uh, aware, Obix. Um, but after that, there's okay. The feeding's taking a little bit longer, but after that came another cat. This cat. So that was the next project after uh, after the, the cat carving. And uh, then... After that... Um, this bracelet, which isn't finished yet, it's got to have the clasp on it, but I'm just waiting for the, a clasp uh, to be delivered. I need a sterling silver clasp uh, for Lady Zara, so uh, until I get that, I can't finish it, actually finish it off. It does a little bit, yes, uh, Shabby Q. 
But as I say, it's the very first carving I've done in full 3D, and most of it was done with a knife. Um, and uh, I need to clean my glasses. So for the very first one, I don't think it was bad. It. Uh, I made, I made a mistake to start with by having the ears too far apart and that kind of dictated the rest of it and uh, once once I carved the ears I couldn't do anything about it I was kind of stuck with them as they were so that was uh, that was it and then the third uh, bracelet was uh, was that one uh, together with a necklace that goes with it as well and today we're doing um, we're about well we're doing some bead um, uh, another bracelet but with bead braiding. Um, only it's uh, it's taking an awfully long time to do. I would, but it's a cap, uh, shabby queue. And yes, so, you know, as, as an artist, I can change my whole uh, meaning of what something is just like that. But you know, it's uh, I don't hide the mistakes either, if you see what I mean. So you know, it's um, it was intended to be a cap. I w uh, I don't, I'm not going to sell that one, but if I were, then possibly yes, I'd say it's a fox. But it doesn't quite look like a fox either. There are times it looked like a bear. Um, it's not got quite got a, uh, a fox face structure either, so it's kind of not quite one or the other. Why are you glad I've got a matter of interest? Why are you glad I've got an Etsy shop for uh, Shabby Q? Beads out, and then I can go back to uh, doing some uh, more braiding. Indeed, that's true. Um, some of us just learn to sort of say, "Hey, we're good anyway." <laughs> Let me just uh, put your hat back on. Um, yeah. uh, well, I'd certainly be pleased if you uh, if you did Shabby Q. That would be absolutely fantastic, of course. There's no pressure to do so. If there's something that interests you, then uh, I, of course, would be more than pleased to sell something. Right, now then. So, my next one is going to be this top. Here, so what I'm going to do is take a bead, and that bead needs to go under all the threads basically before I bring this over the top of here. And I do the same thing on this side, it's going to go underneath because that way it sticks out from the bracelet rather than being embedded inside it. So I'm going to make sure they stay underneath. And then basically it's just more of the same. That's on the outside like that. That one goes under there as well. Uh, 
And then, as they say, rinse and repeat. Quite why you want to continuously rinse something, I'm not sure, but anyway. I guess if it's got a lot of soap in it, you might want to. And hoping this starts to look a little bit better once it's found its form and we've you know we've got a reasonable or a small length of um, braid underneath the uh, the disc. At the moment it looks a little bit untidy. And unfortunately the the thread is unwinding itself from these bobbins but uh, is that the right one? Yes, that's the right one. Uh, what's this device do? This quite literally just holds the threads in place, um, Orbix. That's all. Um, that's, that's its sole job. Um, they... It's Japanese chain. Japanese, I think, is the original sort of art form, if you like, and and they did it without uh, on on what was effectively like a small table with a hole in it, um, a round table with a hole in it, and they just laid the threads over the top with with weights on the end. Um, I think this is kind of like a um, a westernized version that just makes it easier because it you know with it being foam you can actually wedge the uh, thread between them and it kind of um, makes it a bit easier to do or a lot easier to do and to keep the right sort of tension than the uh, original Japanese I'm assuming it is for, uh, art form would do But the overlap, etc., is, is down to the weaving technique. In, in theory, you can do that with without needing the disc. In fact, in my past, I've done this sort of thing with uh, with wire and made sort of like um, well, I guess we call them key fobs. Now one of the things I can see developing here is a spiral and I'll uh, when I get a bit further I'll uh, I'll show you this is a little bit awkward to hold it at the moment
it's actually forming like a tubular structure effectively is this and I mean they they braided one that I showed earlier that that's a tubular structure um, and with either of these you can actually do things like put for example a wire down the middle memory wire um, so that it will actually coil around your uh, wrist for example or you could effectively put like a pencil down the middle or something like that if you wanted a long um, handle on something so you can braid around things Dishi Devil good evening welcome and thank you very much for that those of you who may not know where uh, DC Devil there, DC Devil makes um, is a crafter, a uh, uh, streamer, makes um, uh, quilting, I believe is the correct uh, term, I think, isn't it? She, De uh, she Devil? But the, the quilting is in, in the form of pictures, so some really nice pictures. Now this is growing a heck of a lot faster than I was expecting. Not that I'm complaining, but let's see if I can just... There you go. You see how it's forming a spiral, which I quite like. It looks nice. Now then, I've just done... Um, that. Okay, so i turn it that way. Make sure that goes under that thread. That's okay, Creams. I'm not sure how you do it from the tablet either. <laughs> getting a bit tight so let me just unwind a little bit of that give myself a little bit more space That one is getting a, getting a bit too long, so I'm just going to wind it up a bit. The monofilament slips th through these things so easily that they sort of just unravel themselves. Uh, but if I was to take them out of the those bobbins all together I'd end up with a real sort of mess of tangle of um, of thread that one's getting a bit long as well but we'll see how that goes they keep making sure that the beads go underneath on the outside of the uh, threads.
Baby tears, what's this? It's an elephant, baby tears. Kumahimo braiding uh, with, uh, with beads. This time, we did some braiding without beads yesterday and the day before. And uh, some peyote stitch beading the day before, well, a few days before that. So, you've not been around, you see, for a little while. You've missed things. Ah, uh, that's... Well, I'm guessing the name gives it away a little bit, though, as well. <laughs> but yes, the I believe the original uh, braiding technique um, that is Japanese or Oriental in you know, that sort of Oriental style, anyway. Uh, yeah, I've had to work as well, but. I've still been here for my streams. <laughs> That's okay, baby T, there's no problem. Oh, I thought you I, I thought you meant you had no money. Uh, no, well, occasionally. Um, I did all my travelling. Well, yeah, I'm, I've been working now since I was um, 14. So I've been, uh, you know, I've done a lot of travelling in that time. And given that I used to be a salesman and my customers were on the south coast and I'm in Yorkshire, I used to do a lot of travelling every week. has to be polite now why did you get timed out I'm not quite sure why did you time you out I don't understand that uh, creams I just uh, will fix that in a moment On Leopod. I just need to vanish that now at some point. the right one. No it's not. Oh, okay. Do it this way. Uh, there we go. That should make it a bit easier. Yeah, well well I thought I thought it banned you it thought it, I thought it timed you out before then. Um but uh, there you go, just no naughty words. There's no need for it.
I don't know who Naughty was. Go do it in Steve Street. Uh, if you're talking about there, yep, and their pictures, for, well, their pictures of stuff I've done, and they're all, I cannot get this right, and they're also in the shop, but yes, take a look. Pass it on to friends and family, and there's some nice stuff in there, some, well, I'd say it's nice stuff, I made it, but, um, yeah, good Christmas presents, birthday presents, yeah. Order early for Christmas, because <laughs> they do take a little while to make, as you have seen. So, uh, to avoid disappointment, as they say. Still trying to get the website up and running, which has got uh, got got have better explanations of things, and uh, and also uh, it'll have its own shop as well. I'll get it done sometimes. Too many regulations. Naughty words. Avoid the naughty words, people. There's no need. You know, you you are skilled and accomplished at English. At English, you don't need naughty words to express yourself. Oh, possibly uh, creams, but um, having just made a statement about what people should or shouldn't need to do, if somebody's about to just go and um, blatantly do just that, then I might leave it a little while. Ah, uh, dear. Um, I'm not sure she's actually banned it, to be honest. I think it's just a, just a, uh, it's just a purge. I think. That's um, just in case. If I can remember the command. Um, I think that's the command. Don't think she's actually banned. So, yeah, that's all I thought it was. It's just a purge. It just removes the um, thing. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, well, the only way I can do this is to do that and then that. So, definitely not now, but uh, definitely on the naughty step there, baby tears.
Yeah. Is it? Oh, yes, of course. Sorry, wrong. Uh, yeah. It, it, well, you weren't, but uh, 500 second ban. That's right, Creams. <laughs> That's the bit I forgot. So I did it the easy way. I used Twitch TV. <laughs> no, it isn't baby tears, but as um. Time and a place, shall we say? I have, uh, you know, for for a number of years, the uh, the the only swear word that I've actually ever used for a, a good many years is sugar. We have a visitor. Yeah, it's, it's kind of, you know, as a, as a, what I meant, Creams, you know, as a time and a place, it can, you know, there are times when you get really annoyed and, and that's sort of when it happens. And it's when people just sort of um, do it for, it's part of normal speech, then it's a bit, mm. uh, I don't, uh, baby tears. Um, and it actually doesn't matter what what it's a sequence if uh, that we do this so we start like here what we do is we take the top left one and this is and I'll add a bead at the same time but essentially we just take the top left thread he says trying again take the top left thread from wherever it is pull it over making sure that B goes pull it over and put it next to on the left next to whatever is down there doesn't matter what the number is and then take the bottom right one from where it is and put it up next to whatever's at the top doesn't matter about the number and then do a quarter turn and do exactly the same thing again and if you actually watch the the it rotates um, through all the numbers anyway um, because uh, with it, uh, once I've done these these two it'll end up uh, around the number 19 so I take it from the left put it down to the to the left or whatever's there take it from the bottom right and put it next to whatever's at the top and a quarter turn No, it's not. It's not part of my speech. Besides, if you use it all the time in speech, it, it effectively loses its power. So what do you say when you get really annoyed, <laughs> you know? Perhaps it's easier when you try it for yourself, but you're literally just moving across the disc, moving and then just keep repeating that two actions, left to left, right to right, left to left, right to right, but you turn the disc in between. Mm. 
I think it's complicating this slightly is that I'm just making sure the beads drop into the right place. But other than that, it's um, the braided uh, that I did yes uh, was doing yesterday and the day before is um, is exactly the same. Just left and then right, left down, right up, left down, right up, turn, left down, right up. Antidisestablishmentarianism is in the dictionary as well, um, baby tears, but it doesn't mean you've got to use every other sentence either. <laughs> And I think I refuse to um, to comment further on the definition of that word. filament not my favorite thread you have been unbanned again baby tears Um, a lot of them are bodily functions cream so you know it comes from 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 that you know it's people in Victorian times that was um, you know, something that wasn't uh, just didn't happen shall we say and I'm assuming it come a lot of it comes from there
I think baby tears has gone off in a huff now. I think, I mean, I think words themselves are just um, uh, odd as how they come about. I mean, it's the uh, it sort of pondered sort of things like, why is a chair called a chair? Why don't we call the thing that you sit on um, grass or the thing that you, you know, that's in front of me. Why isn't that called um, a speaker? <laughs> it's, um, I, I think it's just the way words come about full stop is just uh, you know, absolutely fascinating uh, or, or you know, something to ponder why is green green why didn't we call it you know, why isn't this called yellow and the weird thing is If um, uh, if you taught somebody from birth that that was called yellow and that was green, they wouldn't know the difference. They'd always call that green. And grass would be some other colour. But how do you know that when they look at grass that isn't what they see now there's metaphysics for you it did unban you um, oh I guess it's a timeout is a different command I don't use them that often you see about the only thing I ever command I ever use is ban that bracelet let me just put another couple of threads on this and we'll have a quick measure as to roughly how long this is yeah and I'm a spaceman uh, baby tears you're an Irishman. Now stop talking German. That's about a uh, disc is about half an inch thick and so we're about five inches so it looks like I will do this until I run out of beads
forgotten if three if three is uh, streaming tonight. He's hmm. if he was, I'd, I'd expect him to have gone live by now. Um, I don't know if he is, to be honest. Um, I haven't actually checked. Um, Annie, well, Annie's been streaming today. I think I've seen her. Aldel H, have a good evening. See you. Uh, see you later. See you tomorrow. Thank you for dropping in. I might do, um, might well do uh, Baby Tears. Um, the thing is, I need to varnish it first. Um, it's sold? The, uh, the, the Xenomorph that he was doing? He sold it? So, you. I don't think he's got another one. If you mean the last one he was he was painting, yeah, it's um it sold. He he, he sold before he finished painting it. The bobbins dropped off the end of this uh, particular thread, so I'm going to do it without uh, without the bobbin. Yeah, <laughs> the xenomorph, the thing from Alien, uh, the one he was he's been painting for a little while. I am convinced he has sold before he finished painting it. I'm not actually sure. He's, yeah, I think he has finished it. He's been doing some um, oil painting uh, just recently, experimenting with uh, with actual oils and a heavy stick. Talk to him. He might paint you another one. Um, Baby T is he's just bought a new computer, so he probably needs some cash. <laughs> it it was originally for himself, I agree. Yeah, I seem to remember him saying that, but um, I don't I don't remember the story about it. But somebody, uh, I think it was a friend of his, offered uh, some uh, made an offer he couldn't refuse, perhaps. Obviously, you'd have to talk to Fee about that. She's expecting his new computer, I think, tomorrow. Yeah, well, they painted a new, another Darth Vader as well, so... Um, well... It, um, um.
how long have we got here? That's five and a half. So it's six inches long. Yeah, basically we'll just finish off the uh, the number of beads we've got here, I think, and then. Uh, All we can do. He's been a little bit variable over the past for a little while. He's um, had um, personal life get in the way of uh, of streaming for a while. Um, baby tears, but he's sort of back now. He's. Um, He's had some computer problems just recently as well, so he's just bought a new um, new PC, which he's waiting for to to be delivered. And he's actually bought a PC. <laughs> uh, none of this, uh, none of this Apple Mac stuff that he had anymore. That's gone. Yeah, I'm, I'm normally have finished by now, baby tears, but I figured that I'm I'm that close to finishing this. I'd probably finish it anyway, so. I'm just uh, just doing you know, leaving the stream on whilst I do this. But um, have a good evening. Have a good uh, some some nice food. I had what did I have for tea tonight from the fish shop. I had a battered fish and a battered sausage. Just a few beads left. And then what we do then is um, just weave. Um, what we do then is we just weave about another two centimeters, just just the line on its own, to uh, to finish it off so that it's it's got a. A plain area that can then be glued into the clasp. I won't put, I'm not going to put the clasp on tonight. I'll do that tomorrow night. So that's the no, that's not the right one. I want that thread. It is weird how some have one, well, a slightly different number of beads left on each thread. This is a bit where all the threads start getting wrapped around each other, which will be really annoying. And they won't stay in the bobbins, so no, I can do about it. Is the last bead of that one? That's the last bead of that thread. Last bead of that thread. And if I can untangle it, that's the last one of that thread. There. And now we just weave in the is there one more on that and is there one on the other end yeah okay well we'll put those two in as well and 
We've got them, might as well use them. And now it's just thread weaving, which will uh, neaten off the end and tie everything in absolute knots. Did I mention I don't think I like weaving with monofilament? <laughs> I like the bracelet, I think. I just don't like the thread. I'm glad that this is uh, this uh, foam thing, so it does hold them in uh, in position. Otherwise, it would be a really painful thing to do. I keep making sure they don't get wrapped into into the weave in the center
right uh, do a little bit more just it, it doesn't actually matter most of the end will get cut off but uh, we'll just give ourselves enough material to work with easily a couple of centimeters actually what I'm going to do here now is tie these off um, and then we will whip it tomorrow This is frustrating. I'm trying, to, trying to keep the threads out of each other's way. rat's nest that's what we'd call that if I was fishing here's a total rat's nest there get that off of there as well so one Sort of completed bracelet. We'll tidy up the ends tomorrow, both ends, glue them, and then put the uh, the end caps on. But there is the bracelet. Claire, good evening. Welcome. You just, it's, I'm streaming really late tonight just to finish uh, this uh, 
that's basically well at least to this stage it's finished the um the weaving but there we go I'm not sure how long is this oh it will be just marginally under seven it's what six and three quarters actually luckily these two clasps together probably of about an inch inch and a half so that's going to be six and three quarters seven and three quarters eight and a quarter inch bracelet by the time the clasps are on it but there we go I'm holding it out of the way aren't I hooked up a barbie you so want you to do that it's a little bit annoying but this is my first one beading so it wasn't too bad this um, line is a little bit awkward to work with uh, because it doesn't stay in the bobbins and then it does that <laughs> if it doesn't uh, but luckily most of the time I kept it there um, but there we go and I love the spiral on that I think I could have done with I mean I, I haven't quite got the tension quite right probably want to just play with it a little bit just to you know even the tension out but it's a little tiny little bit what I call loose so it sort of squashes a little bit but maybe with a bit of just uh, working it about a little bit that will be okay October Barbie thank you very much for following so tomorrow we'll be putting the class on and then I don't know what we're going to do after that um, actually I do know what we're going to do after that because hopefully uh, Sterling Silver class will arrive tomorrow for the um, uh, peyote beading um, that I need, basically I need to finish but that's it guys I'm afraid it's significantly later than I would normally go on for and I'm going to get myself a cold drink now it's a bit warm here in the studio thank you all for watching persevering watching the frustration of certain parts of it but uh, it's it's now done I'm going to remind those of you I keep holding it on my list of a vision don't I so the camera has been positioned for me to use when I've been doing this, which has been out here. Um, thank you, uh, Shidel, for that. I'm going to remind those of you that may not have checked it out. There is a jewellery shop there selling things like are in the pictures just underneath, which actually it's selling the jewellery. So there are some pyrography and carving pictures there and things. But um, so there's a whole range of pictures of stuff that's been done on stream. But the, um, the shop is selling specifically the jewellery, like that um, uh, bangle there. Not bangle, a uh, bracelet. So if you haven't checked it out, do so. Uh, feel free to pass the URL on to anybody. Anybody at all. Um, make good Christmas presents, birthday presents. Anything really, presents for anything. Uh, I think there's some really nice stuff uh, in there that might be sort of wedding fairs and that sort of thing as well if you know anybody getting married um, apart from that uh, what I'm going to do is say if you're not following me um, Junie didn't join us tonight he did pop up for a while over there he didn't join us tonight but if you were following you might get to know when he arrives because he does from time to time but you don't have to if you don't want to if you just like the notification, then you are welcome, of course, to follow me on Twitter, at ZaragonArt. Details are below the stream window, in case you forget, and they'll be on the end plate in a moment. Otherwise, I should be streaming tomorrow from about 8pm UK time, 1900 hours GMT or UTC. Oh, yeah, about two and three quarters of hours ago, it was 8 o'clock here in the UK. Thank you all. Hope to see you again tomorrow. And uh, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.